Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing around with the ray controller in this oh it's a Hewlett Packard Enterprise DL380 generation 9 big surprise <laughs> but the ray controller in these HPE servers are pretty um, okay they they have actually gone through the effort to make it look good and there is also a lot of nice features and the rate controller in this server just happens to be one of the good rate controllers so let's turn on the server and see how you do that so of course you power it on over here but i have some there is already a couple of discs in it and this is uh, these are spinning discs so these are 450 gigabyte spinning discs so we can we can do something with those and i have some ssds and these are just uh, they're just uh, small boot drives. These are Hewlett Packard 240 gigabytes. I think they're Micron drives. And then there is a couple of other ones here, still 240 gigabytes, but I believe, yeah, these are Samsung drives. So, yeah, let's power on. So, there is multiple ways of getting in, configuring the rate. Um, stuff on the server. What I'm going to be doing today is to uh, to use the built-in stuff, which is down here. Uh, F10, I believe that is Intel 10 prisoning. Yeah, very happy about. Oh, there it is. Going through there, we should be able to um, to configure our rate. It's thinking about it at least. Yeah, it started up. Uh, we have 10 seconds to do something. So I had to press fast. So we have Hewlett Packard Intelligent Provisioning. Then we have Hewlett Packard Smart Storage Administrator. And this Smart Storage Administrator is also available. If you're running a Windows server, you can get a Windows package that you install on your Windows machine. And you can access this from within Windows, which is really smart scripting toolkit windows pe64 bit mode uh, i'm not sure what that is haven't tried that we're gonna go for the middle one and we're gonna see what this rate controller configuration looks like which um, i had just promised you looked pretty good and i hope it still does i must admit i haven't tried it on this system so um, but they usually look the same wow look at the graphics look at the graphics yeah instead of making it stable they made it look good <laughs> i'm kidding there's nothing wrong with hewlett packard's storage controller oops and we get a mouse okie dokie yeah it has trouble focusing on the black screen and there's nothing else and mozilla firefox and Hewlett Packard Intelligent Provisioning. That wasn't exactly what I thought. Oh, there we are. This is the Smart Storage Administrator. And it is really smart, except it's complaining about something. We'll probably see what that is. It might be the battery. It usually is the battery. So uh, uh, we can see the system up here. There, action, diagnostics, viewer ray diagnostics, smart SSD. But that's the server itself. Um, you can have multiple rate controllers in here and then they will be listed down here. We only have that one rate controller at the moment. Probably not gonna put any more in there either. But if we mark that, we get some more options here and we get a warning. So let's see that warning. Ah, yeah, Smart Array P440AR embedded slot has one or more cache module batteries uh, that are that are recharging. Okay, so it's recharging, and it states that stuff that expansion, extension, and migrations are temporarily suspended until the battery capacity are at full charge. Uh, yeah, unfortunately these batteries are notoriously famous for needing replacement. I actually have a couple of them here because I had, uh, had 
some that was replaced at work and uh, yeah it's a battery mod module like this it's two uh, 18650s and I have no idea what goes wrong with these but well Hero Packard replaces them as long as the server is under warranty and uh, I got to keep these the technician said that he had plenty of these so it was a very known problem that they tend to go bad nevertheless they made this look good and we get some useful information over here controller configuration summary it uh, tells us that we have one data array and uh, on that there is one data logical drive and there is two data drives uh, we can get more info and they yeah then it becomes boring but yeah there is a lot of information here so that is kind of good still complains about the battery down here at the bottom but information that you might need here uh, but we can also get another look if we go into configuration we get the array over here we get the physical devices and we get unallocated drives which we have none of let's see the array so we get the array and that consists of one logical drive and then it sees those two 450 gigabyte SAS drives in there awesome and we can we can click the drive and we get information on the individual drive down here that is oh, we can even see more details it's a SAS current temperature is 24 degrees maximum temperature 48 degrees eh. 10,000 rpms it's a it's a quickie so close that so that is very handy those information are pretty good and we have an identified device here so we can press that so we can identify that disk if we were to send someone else down and do something with it so we could um, turn off when turn off when a different controller is selected or application is exited yeah we're gonna go for that one and there's an ok button down here in the corner too okay so now it says that the drive has been uh, turned on for identification so let's see the server so on the server we can see that drive number one here has a blue LED in behind it so it's marking that we also have the option of erasing the drive where it can override the drive with uh, zeros or just random values which is uh, it's a good thing if you have data that uh, somehow shouldn't go on to go anywhere else well it's a good start to uh, to do something like that if um, if you write zeros and everything or random values and everything well you're gonna really want that data if you want to go through the trouble of trying to get that out of there but I think we should try and do this array again so I'm gonna delete this array that the array consists of those two drives but they are in array one it uh, it's a bit confusing because down here it says that that the space is 838 gigabytes but they give you info up here that it's a RAID 1 but they give you the total amount of storage down there so you need to um, you need to know what is right so let's delete this array and say yes so that is gone it's it's more or less it's still there I don't know if I could import it yeah. so now we have two physical drives and we have two unallocated drives which are the same drives so let's go back to arrays and we can create that array again create array and we kind of get the same window here you can have a lot of drives here so this is just two and um, you can sort them by size or location if you have disk shelves in here that could be very handy so if you want to only see the drives that are in the physical server and then drives that are located in a dash afterwards that that could be uh, neat so we're going to create an array and we can pick them here and see nice graphics that they have made here or we can just pick all or pick none or yeah we're going to pick all of them and then we're going to go down here it says that two is selected and it gives us the size of the disks down here and we can create array and it gives us some more options I guess there we are well the array now consists of those two disks 
but an array without anything on it is kind of pointless so what we put on top of that is our logical drives it works this way that you put drives in the server and the drives are presented to the RAID controller or they are connected to the RAID controller in the RAID controller you create logical drives that the RAID controller then presents to the operating system so the operating system does not know anything about this drive it just knows that it has a drive this drive could be a RAID 1 or a RAID 0 it could be a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 or whatever the operating system would not really know that uh, it just has a drive so we have different options we can pick here we can say RAID 0 then we get this amount of space down here and if we pick RAID 1 we get half this amount of space and it has some stripe size full stripe size that you can um, if you have special purpose or if you need to know what that is there is a button here that tells us what what this is all about we can also pick our number of sectors per track um, 32 or 63 usually what it picks will do very well so it's only if you have some very special needs that you need to to change anything here um, so we're just gonna go with the create logical drive and it's gonna do that and blah 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 blah, blah. it's finished yes we are more or less back at where we were so we deleted the drive and we created it again no problem that was a simple one so let's uh, now we're gonna take these fillers out um, if you have a Hewlett Packard server like this or any other server very important to get the fillers here because um, these drives they use about mm, five eight watts or so if they're really doing something and that means that it's a good idea to get some airflow through them and um, guess what if there's a big gapping hole in the front of the server the air doesn't want to go this way it will just go that way so if you need some of these I can really highly recommend my playhouse shop where these are available in great numbers so um, yeah if you're into Hewlett Packard servers I have a lot of these <laughs> so, yeah uh, so let's just pop in these drives and we're doing this while the server is on these are hot pluggable bridge okay so our four new drives was put in and the server checked them out you saw that checking out the last little one so over here on the screen I haven't done anything yet so it, they don't just immediately pop up you have to uh, I believe you have to refresh here rich look at that six physical devices four unassigned so now we can do even more stuff with our controller here so we can see our unassigned drives and it sees them in a weird way and this is because the back plane of the front of the server is divided into uh, channels we could put them all in the in the back of the server and they would all be down here hmm. should we just try that i think we should just try that there is a connection uh, from the rate controller to the first four drives here and another connection to the last four drives over here so if you want those four drives to be in the same connection we can move these two bridge over there if they if they will let me there and there oh and we'll put these fillers in which is widely available at my place I'm gonna stop there. there so now we should get two drives in the first controller and four drives in the second so I haven't touched it yet we need to refresh before it does anything so refresh there we are they're all in port 2 box 3 
Uh, it's kind of weird that that is box three. Mm, yeah, never mind. If we go up to physical drives, we can see that up here it says SAS drives. Uh, then we can see SATA drives, or we can see all drives, and we can see internal uh, drive cage here, and it sees the first two, and then internal drive cage number two or port two. It sees the, the four other drives. So yeah. You can't mix SAS and SATA drives in the same array, that is not gonna work, but never mind that. So let's go and, and do something with these drives. So we go up to, oh, we can select them here and we can create an array down here as well, or we can go up to the arrays and do the same thing. So uh, let's create array and we get some more options because now there are some more drives available. So now we can do a RAID 0, a RAID 1 plus 0, RAID 5 or RAID 6 ADG. I'm not sure what that ADG stands for, but I'm gonna just RAID 6. And same options as before, same options as before, same options as before. So that is all good. So we can make a RAID 6 out of these, or we can make a RAID 5 out of these, or whatever we want. Um, so let's go for the RAID 6. Now we're just gonna go for the very simple one and just take default and it's just gonna be created. And it gives us a warning about some um, SSD stuff, so yes, yes. Ah, okay, there it is. So RAID 6 gives us about 450 gigabytes. Awesome, so finish. Now we have two arrays. We have the array we started with, with the two 450 gigabytes, and we have the second array with the four SSDs. Nice. We have other options here. So let's uh, let's delete this again. Delete array. Yes, sir. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna make something weird. I'm gonna instead of a RAID six, I'm gonna make a RAID five out of three drives and then we're gonna add a hot spare to it. So um, let's go for the unallocated drives here. And we're gonna select the first three drives. It could also be the last three drives or it could be random drives, no problem. Then we're gonna create the array down here and we're gonna see that now the options does not include RAID 6, but all the other stuff is about the same. So create that. Uh, still want to continue. Yes, it's going to take a little bit. I know. There. There we have that. We have the same amount of space, just less security. Now we only have three drives. We can manage hot spare drives down here. So if we manage that, we get presented with the drive that we have, which is, well, that's probably the one that we are going to be using. There is also unpick the smart controller and we go to modify spare mode. In here we can modify uh, when it's gonna be needing a hot spare. It can use the hot spare if a drive fails. If the drive fails and doesn't work anymore, it will take in the hot spare. It can also do it if, um, if a drive, if the drive is marked as predicted failure, which means that the system thinks this drive is gonna fail. And if it does that, it can take the hot spare in and replace it already there. So this is another security feature thing that it has. You can decide how soon in the process the hot spare is going to be used. So let's um, let's go back and assign our hot spare. I'm going to leave it at this for now. So we need to go back into our array and we need to pick our second array there. Uh, we need to manage hot spare drives there. So in here it becomes a little bit complicated because um, what normally there is dedicated hot spare drives for a single array and then there is a worldwide hot spare or something. It means that if you have three arrays of drives that are all the same size, you can have one hot spare for all those three arrays and if any of the drives in those three arrays stops working, well, the hot spare will jump into the array that needs it. That might be what is being referred to here, that the hot spare is assigned to an array, but 
yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that. We're just gonna pick the, the first one. We only have one array, so it's it can't be used for anything else. So pick that and save. That was a long round about that. And we're good to go, finish. So that turns up green down here. There are other features of this rate controller here. If we go over and check the rate control, oh, stop that. Well, it is actually very nice that it tells us what it's doing in the background. Right now it's um, it's telling us about the battery up here. It's telling us that the cache for smart array, blah, 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 is not enabled, probably because of the battery. And down here it says that the background partition initializing, well, it's, it's fixing logical drive number two in the background. So uh, we can already start using it, but it's still working on it. So it might be a little bit slower while it's doing that so that's very nice um stop it modify controller settings we get some more settings here that we can mess with which we have some special need i don't advanced controller settings gives us even more options uh, to do stuff on the controller and then we get we have already been in here modify spare activation mode then there's clear configuration. If we just want to clear everything, we don't, but we can. Then there is modify power mode, which gives us um, well minimum power, balanced or maximum power. Yes. And then we can set the boot sector. Which one do we want to boot from? Currently it sets to none of them. So if I wanted to boot from this, probably pick one of them. So let's... Uh, primary boot device there so okay so we can install something on that later so we pick that and finish and okay and then we have managed device leds so we can turn on leds we don't need that right now so this has been made very pretty for us so that's very cool there is a cache manager here also so we can mess around with the cache on the machine right now the battery is not working very well so it's probably not a good idea but it tells us that we can we can put cache on this drive enable write cache with battery not present blah blah so we can overwrite that if we wanted to and it's probably not a good idea so it's probably because of that battery uh, i would expect that some of the cache would have been used for writing as well as reading but with the battery offline that's probably why so cancel that it's fine license manager you can you can buy additional licenses if you want your hp smart cash something something to do other stuff there is some licenses that you can you can purchase i haven't got any of them on this one and there are some encryption stuff for yeah I'm sure that's a lot of fun and a really easy way to lose all your data is just to lose the master key down here so cancel that <laughs> so I guess that's about it for this rate controller so this is actually one of the things that I really like with Hewlett Packard Enterprise servers they have gone through some effort to make this look good I enjoy that I wish that Lenovo would have done something similar and make it look good and give you a good experience messing around with the rate controller and also they're kind of consistent. So any of Hewlett Packard Enterprises rate controllers will show up in here. And it's a really nice place to just have all your rate controllers in, in one spot there. And you can um, configure them from in here or from within Windows. And I'm sure there's also a Linux interface if you're running Linux. I haven't tried that one, but, but I would expect so. But I hope you enjoyed this messing around with their rate controller my rate controller and seeing some of the different options that are in there it's not rocket scientist it's pretty easy to set up an array and it uses the cache and stuff automatically when the battery is good it will just make it faster all by itself it has that battery and it has two gigabytes of cache uh, fast memory inside of the rate controller that will 
handle data coming in and data going out so it will even on slow spinning drives it will act really fast to start with if you're moving a lot of big data it will slow down when it runs out of cache but well but two gigabyte is actually a lot when you're talking about um, speeding up data transfers so uh, yeah and just again remind you if you need some check out my playhouse shop links is in the description and uh, and thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye